Okay, we're going to talk about female problems with regard to the female reproductive system and the effects of estrogen. We're going to also go through the EDCs. EDC is the abbreviation for endocrine disrupting chemicals, which in our case we're going to mean it to, to use it as estrogen disrupting chemicals. So these are all chemicals that tend to increase estrogen activity in the body. Um, estrogen, among other things, it's an obesogen. It causes a person to become fatter. When estrogen levels are very high, like when a woman is pregnant, it tells her body to store weight because the baby might need that for energy. So high exposure to estrogen tends to make a person fat. Um, it also activates growth of the cells in the uterus. So it's going to cause um, a lot of fibroid tumors. Fibroids are super common. And I've known entire families where all the women had hysterectomies in their 20s or 30s due to fibroids. Um, and my best guess is it's because they're all drinking tap water, so there's a lot of estrogenics in, in most uh, tap water. In addition, they're eating non-organic meat, which also leads to very high estrogen levels. Um, estrogen will increase pretty much all of the common female reproductive system problems. It'll increase dysfunctional uterine bleeding. They'll have heavier periods, longer lasting periods, more uh, PMS-like symptoms, more menstrual cramps. Another thing is endometriosis. Endometriosis can be a devastating problem for a woman. It can make her infertile. It can cause a lot of pain. Um, and basically, a lot of them, they go right to surgery. They never even think about just lowering their estrogen exposures. Okay? Infertility. Lots of women, they're frustrated they can't have a baby. Well, a big part of it quite often is all these estrogenic chemicals. It's not only preventing them from being able to ovulate. It's also making them hypothyroid. Um, morning sickness of pregnancy is worse with uh, high estrogen exposures, uh, postpartum depression. Um, in addition, their babies, male babies, are an uh, increased risk of being born with hypospadias. It's a deformity of the upper surface of the penis. Cryptocortism, you know, undescended testicle, putting the child at increased risk for testicular cancer and low testosterone. That testicle will typically get surgically removed. Uh, rare things like adenomyosis of the uterus. Um, increased risk of autoimmune diseases. You know, having a baby is like having a transplant. So it's going to decrease the reactivity of the immune system in some ways. But in other ways, it almost makes it a little schizophrenic. It's going to increase activity of the immune system such that women have a lot more autoimmune diseases than men do. Um, Postmenopausal, it increases the risk of a woman having hot flashes. And so like, you know, in Japan where they're eating all the rice and whatnot, they didn't even have a word for postmenopausal hot flashes before the 1970s uh, because the transition into menopause was mostly just no longer having periods. But now that they're becoming westernized, they're having all more of these problems. You know, like my wife's postmenopausal with hot flashes. And so it leads to disagreements on the thermostat. I always want the house a lot hotter, you know. So I'm quite fine with her. Go to your friend's house, you know, and I can turn the heat up. Especially if I want to lift weights, I like the house hot. Being warm thins the blood. It, it makes your blood more like water, less like a milkshake. And that uh, I think that improves oxygenation of the tissues. And I know I think best. I like to be real warm when I'm reading or thinking. So I think there's something good about that. Okay, increased amount of benign breast masses like fibrocystic disease. And of course, the big, the big one is breast cancer. So high, increased estrogenic exposure increases the risk of getting breast cancer because it stimulates proliferation of the breast ductal cells. And in a man, the equivalent of the breast is the prostate. So it increases the risk of prostate cancer. So this is highly relevant, avoiding all these estrogenics for a man and for a woman. So here's a picture of these diseases. We'll go from top to bottom real quick. You know, the psychological issues of depression, postpartum depression, morning sickness, hypothyroidism. There's a bunch of estrogens that decrease thyroid function. So most commonly you think of hypothyroidism and you think of Hashimoto's disease um, and maybe sequela of Grave's disease but it's also a lot of these estrogens are decreasing thyroid function. So getting all these unnecessary estrogenic exposures out of your life can help you maintain your thyroid function, which is good. You know, you want to minimize how much you need to take medicines or, and all that stuff. Okay, here's a typical breast cancer. You know, the red right here in the upper outer quadrant of the breast with the enlarged lymph nodes, we'll call these hot on a PET scan. You know, the FDG PET is the fluoral deoxyglucose positron emission tomography and you know we'll see these and the point I'm making is upper outer quadrant cancers of the breast are becoming more common. They used to be about 30 percent of breast cancers now they're about 60 percent of breast cancers and it's thought the main reason is deodorants so that if somebody takes their armpit here so I can get this picture there 
and they're rubbing that deodorant in there. Typically, there is aluminum on the deodorant, which is a metalloestrogen. And then there's going to be some type of preservative, like a parabenzoic acid. Parabens, they're typically called. They're both estrogenic. They're both lipophilic. So your skin is primarily lipid, so they're going to be transdermally absorbed through your skin. And, you know, you can, when you go swimming in the water, okay, you don't gain 10 pounds instantly from the water being absorbed through your skin. It's because your skin is a lipid primarily, and it's a barrier to water. But it is not a barrier to lipid, and biochemistry like dissolves like. So lipophilic estrogens go right through your lipophilic skin, and then they start going around your bodily tissues, including the breast and the uterus. Um, it causes proliferation of uterus cells, like the muscular layer, myometrium, and that increases fibroid tumors causes proliferation of the endometrium, the lining cells of the uterus, and that increases the risk of uterine cancer. We talked about endometriosis with the heavy periods. Sometimes a woman will have such heavy periods that it starts going backwards out the fallopian tube into the peritoneum of the abdomen and causing a lot of inflammation as the blood contracts as it slowly gets reabsorbed. And so there's been women who've you know, just gotten all the estrogenic out of their life, become vegan, stop eating the meat, and their endometrius has gone away. It doesn't happen in every one of them, but you know what? It's worth a try before you go for surgery. You know, surgery is a much bigger deal than changing your diet. You can end up with adhesions from surgery. It's no walk in the park. Okay, long, heavy periods. So that can lead to her being anemic. It can just lead to a lot of discomfort, some moodiness. Um, then she can get stuck taking iron sap, supplements, all kinds of things. So it's best to just get that under control. Um, we're going to talk about how to do that. And ovulation. You know, what is a typical birth control pill, EE2, ethinyl estradiol? Well, high estrogens prevent you from ovulating because they make the body think it's pregnant. It doesn't need to ovulate, okay? The goal of the uterus and the ovaries is to get you pregnant. If it thinks you're already pregnant, then you don't need to go down that path. Okay, and here's a baby, male baby. There'll be, you know, increased risk of deformities of the penis like hypospadia, uh, undescended testicle, which increases the risk of testicular cancer needs to come out. So the point I'm making is, in my experience, a lot of premenopausal females have, have tended to think this nutrition stuff is a big joke, this estrogen stuff is a big joke, who cares? And that's just a sign of being ignorant. It's very common. And what I'm trying to say is I think a premenopausal woman should pay attention and care about all this stuff because, you know, they're probably going to want to have a baby at some time. And the healthier they are, the more likely their baby is going to be healthy. And then when they're postmenopausal, they got similar health risks as a man does. And what protects them while they're premenopausal is the menstruation. From that, it's like a monthly uh, uh, phlebotomy, and that lowers their blood viscosity, decreases the risk of atherosclerosis and whatnot. But, and also breast cancer is something that can, can get you even when you're in your 20s. So it's uh, pretty easy to minimize all these risk factors. In countries where they have minimal estrogenic exposures and they don't eat meat or hardly any meat, they have hardly any breast cancer, uterine cancer, any of this stuff. Okay, um, we talked about the deodorants. Uh, what else is of interest there? Um, when you shave, oh, a lot of women shave, and then that increases the transdermal absorption, so that's a bad idea. And I would make the point, you don't need to wear deodorant, okay? It's just a typical peer pressure conformance, low IQ thing to do. And, you know, I've had a million conversations in my life with other guys about women. Never once, not once, has any guy ever said he doesn't like her or he's not attracted to her because of her body odor. That just doesn't happen. Um, what I hear guys say, they're not attracted to a woman because she's fat. I hear that all the time. And so what makes a woman fat? Eating meat, eating oils, and having exposure to all these estrogenics. You know, if a woman avoids those things, she's probably not going to be fat. And I think it's just because of how the male brain works. You know, the primitive part of the male brain wants to reproduce, get its genes into the next generation. And basically, if she's fat to the primitive mind, that means that you know, uh, she can't have a baby with you. She's pregnant already. And, you know, it's dangerous to approach a woman. You know, her brother might beat you up, her boyfriend, her father. So I think the primitive brain says, why take a chance? We're not going to have a baby anyways. Okay, so. Okay, here's the uh, chemistry here. Uh, cholesterol is the backbone for all the steroid hormones, uh, estrogen, testosterone, etc. And so there's four rings, A, B, C, D are the rings. They're all, there's 27 carbons in total and none of them has anything going on except for number three over here with the hydroxyl group. So they're all nonpolar, lipophilic, um, except for the hydroxyl group here. Polar means that it's different from one side to the other, that there's a little bit of a charge on it such that, for example, the hydrogen can come off and it can form a hydrogen bond with another molecule. Um, it can re It's more reactive and it's more likely to be 
uh, soluble in aqueous solution, a water-like solution. The body's uh, an aqueous solution all over the place, um, other than within membranes, for example. Okay, so that's worth knowing that there's 27 carbons on cholesterol. Okay, estradiol, this is the most common form of estrogen. And so di means two, ol is alcohol group. So there's two alcohol groups. A hydroxy group and an alcohol group are the same thing. So here's OH, here's OH, di all. Okay, and then here's the aromatic ring. Aromatic ring is called aromatic because it has a, a pleasant smell typically. Um, and it's a benzene ring is the other name of it. And the relevance is that these double bonds are not in fixed locations. They move around. They resonate, so to speak, such that the electrons uh, related to these carbons can actually run around through all six of these carbons and that causes incredible stability. You can leave a chemical with a benzene ring and a hydroxyl group on there. This combination is called a phenol by the way. It'll sit on a shelf for four years and not change. And then the hydroxyl group is antimicrobial. So it's the perfect preservative. It's got great shelf life and it's got good antimicrobial properties. So what that means is these estrogen-like preservatives, they're in everything. You can't get away from them. They'll never go away because even if one of them gets banned, the company will just make a variant on it and it'll be back in there next week. So you can forget about changing the world and changing the, the chemis chemicals that are out there. All you can do is learn what they are and avoid them. Okay, what do estrogens do? We talked about some of these things. They cause a person to gain weight, activating the P part gamma fat switch, so to speak. Um, they cause a proliferation of breast tissue, thus increasing the risk of fibrocystic disease, breast cancer, proliferation of the endometrium. We talked about heavy periods, cramping and whatnot. Male prostate, also proliferation of growth. It's like a uterus equivalent in a male. Um, the big thing that a lot of people don't know about is decrease decreases thyroid function. Some of them do, a lot of them do. And so you can have thyroid uh, function being decreased from multiple different directions. And then infertility is a huge one. Tons of women are infertile. A lot of times infertility in a woman is because I see all these women, they're hyper-motivated to get their you know, educations and their degrees. I know a lot of doctors are very pretty, very nice, but they sort of like they forgot to have kids, you know, and they're pushing 40 or more and they aren't married, don't have any kids. I see that quite a bit. They're very nice, very pretty ladies, and they're just uh, they're becoming sad, you know. And I know this one really stuck-up girl. She didn't want to have a kid. She wanted to do all these things. I actually dated her, but then that's partly why we broke up. Because I'm like, you know, one of these days we've got to have a family. If you don't want to have a family, then you know, I'm gonna find another woman. Um, okay, um, disrupts immune function. Uh, let's see, what else? Autoimmune disease, more common, increased risk of allergies. That's part of having increased allergies. Getting all these estrogenics out of your life. Uh, can potentially also help with allergies. They're prothrombotic. They increase the tendency to form blood clots. And um, they increase the risk of a deep vein thrombosis. And you see these sometimes. They're rare, but you see them sometimes, in, even in young women on birth control pills. Increased risk of myocardial infarction, like on a postmenopausal woman on estrogen replacement theory. That's one of the risks of it. Um, elevated estrogen in males, because men are exposed to all these chemicals quite a bit, and they eat a lot of junk food and a lot of meat. And in men, it can cause gynecomastia, enlargement of the breast tissue, can cause you know obesity. And a big thing it causes, kind of a little bit unexpected, is that it has a tendency to cause apathy in men. And you know, there's a lot of male apathy. It's actually a real problem. Um, men are not as motivated, I don't think, as they used to be. Because, you know, for example, in colleges, the majority of students nowadays are women. It's at least 60% of the students in a college at an undergraduate level are females. You know, it used to be, you know, quite the opposite. Uh, a lot of men, they're just not motivated. They want to sit around playing video games and eating junk food, getting fat. And then they're going to end up having to do a lot of work later to make up for that. Okay, BPA, bisphenol A. Um, this is a very common type of plastic. It can be used for other purposes. Most commonly, one thinks of it as a plastic uh, container or lining within, a, let's say, a metal can. And one thing you got to watch out for, I'll show you a picture in just a moment here. Whenever something says no BPA, BPA free, that's really a joke because there's so many BPA substitutes that it probably still has BPA like estrogenic chemicals in it. Um, watch out for cans. Cans will have a, let's say it's made out of aluminum, there'll be an inner lining of BPA. Then you get a tear in the BPA and you end up really with kind of a screw job. You've got the BPA chemical leaching into the food plus 
because there's a tear in the BPA, you've got the aluminum from the can getting into the food too. And they're both uh, estrogens. Aluminum is a metalloestrogen. BPA, of course, is estrogenic. You know, the receipts that you get from a store on thermal paper, just tell them to put it in the bag. You don't really want to touch it. Uh, polycarbonate plastics, there's a lot of things made out of that. Baby bottles used to be BPA, now they're BPA free. Um, glass is nice. You can get a glass with plastic wrapped around it uh, so the kid's not drinking the BPA. Don't ever heat it up in a microwave, of course, and melt the BPA into the, the child's drink. Um, water bottles, use glass. It can be in PVC pipes. Brominated BPA is a flame retardant. That's one thing to watch out for, too. For example, for you know medical people, you know, wear a surgical gown if it's appropriate for the procedure you're doing. But if you're just doing something like, you know, removing stitches or something, you can just wear a barrier gown, one of the white or the yellow gowns with no flame retardant on it. You don't need to wear the surgical gowns, the blue ones, which will have a flame retardant on it. Um, then it gets on your clothes and stuff. Wash your clothes then if you touch that. Okay, phthalates are plasticizers. Typically is what we think of them. They're like these little particles. They can help shape the plastic. They can sometimes you know, stick off the plastic like little pieces of glitter. Um, you got to watch out because whatever you're drinking, if you're, you're drinking water out of something, it'll maybe be made out of BPA and have plasticized or phthalates on it, and that gets into the, the food stuff, especially if it's lipophilic in any way. Like you never want oils in a plastic container. That's the worst because it's lipophilic oil next to a lipophilic plastic, and it's going to have a lot more phthalate getting into it. Um, a lot of water bottles are made out of phthalate, like, you know, polyethylene terephthalate, you know, PET. Phthalates are often present in fragrances, perfumes, or in vinyl floors, vinyl shower curtains, uh, plastic mattresses, you know, like a baby mattress and stuff. So you don't want that. Uh, phthalates are associated, of course, with causing obesity, asthma, allergies, and you got to watch out. They can cause potentially cognitive problems in kids too, attention deficit, and they seem to impair a little bit the function of brain-derived neurotropic growth factor. And then the big thing, like I said, is this uh, thyroid dysfunction. Okay, here's a picture of what's going on with BPA, bisphenol A. So it's bis meaning two, and there's two phenol groups. So a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group, that's a phenol group. Benzene ring with a hydroxyl group. So there's a phenol on each side of it. Remember, all it takes is a benzene ring with this hydroxyl group on it, a phenol, and that thing will interact with the estrogen receptor. The estrogen receptor, you know, for who knows how many years humans were around, uh, it had no competition. It just binded to estrogen, forms a hydrogen bond with this uh, oxygen here. But nowadays, there's all these chemicals that take advantage of that. So it's really kind of defenseless, that estrogen receptor. You have to protect your estrogen receptors by not putting all this crap on your body or in your body. Okay, and right here, you got two methyl groups, you know, coming off the carbon right here in the middle between these two phenol groups on bisphenol A. So when the company says, oh, we've banned bisphenol A, we don't use it anymore, they're just going to use something like BPS. Sorry that the other half of this is covered, but basically it's the same thing as BPA, except they put a sulfate right in the middle. whoop de doo It still has uh, estrogenic activity from the phenol group on both ends of it. So don't ever think that uh, companies are going to get rid of these things. They're going to be there forever. These, these chemicals are worth billions of dollars. Okay, triclosan is uh, an estrogenic chemical found in a lot of soaps and shampoos, uh, dishwashing soap. I don't even use shampoo anymore. I saw this video and this guy was saying, oh, you don't need shampoo, you just wash your hair, you wash the oils, out. Well, you wash the natural chemicals out of your hair and then you put them back in with something else and he, says, he said there's no point. So I started trying it. I've not washed my hair in three weeks. I can't tell the difference and I kind of like it that way because I wanted to be careful about what shampoo I use on my head, so I got like newborn baby shampoo. They got to test it on a newborn baby because they don't want the baby to die, and newborn baby is kind of fragile. But even still, with a newborn baby shampoo, there were two estrogenics in it. So I would only use one squirt, one squirt, and I would only use it in the morning if I had to go to work that day. But now I don't even use it on any day. I don't use any ester any of this shampoo. I just, you don't need shampoo, okay? You know, I keep my hair short. You know, maybe if you got real long hair, I don't got any hair on the top here, so don't matter so much. But shampoo is quite overrated, okay? So see how kind of progress we're making here. We're saving money. Now don't have to waste money on shampoo. You don't need to waste money on deodorant. You don't need dishwasher soap. Okay, let's just finish up on the mouth here though, and the triclosan related stuff. I don't even use toothpaste anymore. I'll brush my teeth with just a plain brush because I want to get off any biofilms in which bacteria can hide. But all the toothpaste has so many bad chemicals in them, I don't use any of them anymore. 
Um, and then the other thing is a typical stupid person will have mouthwash with triclosan in it. And the way that's totally stupid is they're basically going to ingest or absorb some of that estrogenic triclosan, for example, which is harmful to their body. And then simultaneously, they're going to they're wipe out the good bacteria in their mouth that help produce nitric oxide vasodilator. So it's like a double negative. You don't need mouthwash. Okay, a couple quick points about parabens, powder benzoic acids. So the benz just means like a benzene ring. Think of it that way. Okay, that's a good way to explain it. Um, they're called p-hydroxy. They're in the power up position. We'll talk about that in just a moment. We'll show you, see a picture of it. And uh, there's a lot of derivatives on there where they'll substitute little chemicals on it. And these basically are antimicrobial, especially against mold. You know, all these companies that make a product, they want it to sit on that shelf for four or five years until it gets sold. And they don't want it being returned to them because there's mold growing in it. And so it's going to be in just about everything. There's going to be some type of estrogen preservative in your deodorant, anything you could put on your body. Deodorant, sunscreens, cosmetics, you name it. Transdermally absorbed. And we talked about it potentially of thyroid, causing thyroid dysfunction. Okay, here's the chemistry of the powder bends. So basically, you have a benzene ring and you'll have a substituent on it. So that'll be the index substituent. And then the second substituents will be named relative to this one. Okay, that's a carboxylic acid. This is a benzene group. So it just gets called benzoic acid, having that on it. Now, the first position adjacent to the, the carboxylic acid is called the ortho position. The way I remember it is I've drawn this to look like a face. And O kind of looks like, O for ortho kind of looks like an eye. So I put a little dot in the center of it. And so that's how you can remember the carbon adjacent to the carboxylic acid carbon is the ortho position. Down here lower is the meta position it's called. It's designated by the letter M. And I just remember it being like a mustache. Okay, see how this looks like a face? I drew a nose and a mouth on there. But the point is, this just makes it easier to remember. And then the powder hangs down like a little beard. It projects outward. So the reason it'll be called powder benzoic acid is because there's a hydroxyl group located opposite of the carboxylic acid. And these powder bends, they're in everything, okay? You're going you're gonna to see them or something related to them all over the place. A lot of times they'll, they'll put something else in here. Like if they put a methyl group on here, that'll be methyl power benzoic acid. If they put an ethyl group, ethyl power benzoic acid, that sort of thing. Okay, I have a totally separate video going through all the details of sunscreen if you care about that. But I'll just make a quick point. For sunscreens, you don't want to use them. Sunscreens, I think, are more dangerous than being in the sun. Just go in the sun for a while. When you feel like you're about to get sunburned, go back inside. All right, that'd be my recommendation. Or if you got to be outside a lot, some people do. You know, get a sombrero, wear a long sleeve shirt, uh, protect yourself from the sun. If you have to wear a sunscreen, I would recommend using one of the sun blocker type things, for example, like zinc, zinc oxide, but with no nanoparticles. So zinc oxide with no nanoparticles is real thick. It's not cosmetically the most appealing. But if you get the cosmetically appealing ones, typically it's been processed to have nanoparticles, and those are potentially transdermally absorbed. Potentially they're going to maybe even cross the blood-brain barrier. It's not known yet. So I would want to avoid that sort of thing. Um, oh, what did I say? How to judge a person's intelligence. You kind of judge a person's thinking ability based on certain things. Lots of people are good talkers. And you know, where everybody talks every day, they're pretty good at it. But if they have to write an essay, a lot of times it's dramatic. I've seen a whole bunch of nurses where they had to hand in an essay and I, for some reason, had to read them. And this one nurse, man, you couldn't tell her from any of the other nurses, but man, could she write. And it was like, wow. Um, another thing is grocery cart. If I'm at the store, I can't help it. I look at what other people put in their grocery cart. If I see somebody putting a big, you know, liter soda pop, I just think that person's an idiot. I see them putting a bunch of alcohol. I think alcoholic. I can't help it, but you just do. Um, how they handle chemicals. Like I've seen people who, uh, when they have to work with chemicals, and I look at them. And basically, uh, a lot of stupid people, they, they're not even bothered at all by chemicals, and they don't ventilate the room. I'm like, I always think the person, if somebody's working with these toxic chemicals and they don't even open the door of the room, that's stupid. Okay, so... That's not a good sign to be in love with chemicals. Chemicals are dangerous. Trust me, I have a lot of experience with them. And if you study them, you will find that out to be the case. Okay, um, they put sunscreen chemicals into car seats and some other plastics because they, they want to prevent sun damage. And I think I've, you've heard me maybe say my cousin used to smell like the new car seats because he thought it smelled like a woman and he liked that. But I don't think that's a smart move. Who knows what other chemicals are in there? Um, Okay, now one of the big things is eating meat. 
meat really raises a person's estrogen level. So a lot of guys think it's macho to eat meat. Yeah, they're a big, tough, paleo muscle man eating meat. Yeah, right. It increases your estrogen, okay? It increases estrogen, number one, because of anabolic estrogens. They'll feed estrogens to the animal to make it get fat faster, okay? They, you know, CAFO, concentrated animal feeding operation, they want that animal getting big and fat as fast as possible so they can sell it. And so the anabolic estrogens, when the person eats that stuff, tend to get fat. There's also a lot of herbicide estrogenics. Let's say they're spraying atrazine on the corn. Um, that gets, the animal eats that. The animal then bioaccumulates that in their fat. When you eat that animal, you're eating that. The soy estrogenics, very commonly fed to the animal. And so you could be eating a lot of estrogen without realizing it. Um, and then we're going to talk about how the liver excretes estrogen from the human body under normal conditions. And the meat changes the gut bacteria leading to uh, that estrogen being deconjugated, reabsorbed in the body. I'll show a picture of it in a sense. It'll, it'll make a lot more sense as soon as we see the picture. One last thing on meat and estrogen levels is the cows nowadays have been engineered to produce milk while they're pregnant. A pregnant cow has very high estrogen levels. So this gets into the milk because a lot of people ask me, well, you know, for my children, shouldn't I feed them whole milk? Don't they need to grow? Why should I give them skim milk? You know, you shouldn't give them milk at all. But um, the disadvantage of the whole milk is it's going to have lots of estrogen in it. And, you know, it used to be the average age of puberty and still is in some rural plant, primarily plant eating communities, like 16, 17 years of age. But the average age of puberty in the city, you know, in a city in an urbanized country is very low. And some of them I've heard as low as nine years old. Um, and believe me, it's shockingly low. Uh, a lot of girls are going into puberty long before they're ready to handle the responsibility that goes with that. I had a lot of people, you know, you would think they're all graduate degrees and their kids are going into puberty real early and they're worried about it. Okay, here's a picture of how estrogen is excreted from the human body. First of all, the estrogen or the estrogen-like chemical goes into the liver, and then this is phase one of detox. I put yellow in here to remind us of fat because it's a f primarily a fat-soluble chemical initially. And phase one of liver detoxification. And by the way, this is pretty standard for liver detoxification of lots and lots of different chemicals, is that the relatively toxic lipid soluble chemical first comes into the liver and it's hydroxylated by a cytochrome p450 type enzyme hydroxylation to put a hydroxyl group on there makes it more polar makes it more water soluble and then in the second phase now i drew this line to separate phase one detoxification from phase two detoxification they'll put even a bigger more polar molecule on there like a glucuronide so this is glucuronidation. It's also called conjugation of the estrogen to make it further more water soluble. And then it's excreted into the bile. The bile is connected to the gallbladder. It's a storage form for bile. But the bile duct then connects with the bile, like the second part of the duodenum here. So the estrogen normally is excreted from the liver into the bile. That's an important point. Some estrogen is excreted through the urinary system in a similar fashion. But for our purposes, what's relevant is a significant amount of estrogen is excreted into the bile and this goes into the colon. So here we've got the letter E for estrogen and the glucuronic acid group attached to it making it more polar and also tagging it. This needs to be removed with the bowel movement. Okay, But here's the problem. There's basically two types of gut flora in the bacteria. The two types of gut flora are gut flora from eating a plant-based diet versus gut flora from eating a meat-based diet or a processed food-based diet. The lack of fiber in meat and processed food causes a big change in gut bacteria. The gut bacteria associated with meat have more of this enzyme, glucuronidase. Glucuronidase enzyme will cleave the bond between the estrogen and the glucuronic acid. So it'll make this estrogen deconjugated. Once the estrogen is separated from the glucuronic acid, the body now will absorb it. So it'll get absorbed from the colon into the blood. And that's a problem because it raises estrogen levels. And high estrogen levels cause proliferation of breast ductal tissue, increase the risk of breast cancer, and all, increase the risk of uterine cancer, increase the risk of prostate cancer, all these problems. So you don't want that happening. So the good gut bacteria associated with the fiber and plant food, they don't have this enzyme. They have much lower levels of this enzyme, glucuronidase, so it protects you from high estrogen levels. Normally what you want your body to do is defecate out the excess estrogen. If you just give your body the food it's designed to eat, it's good at doing everything it needs to do.
Okay, water estrogens, we talked about how tap water can be very high in estrogen. The reason is it's too expensive to remove all the estrogens in municipal water filtration. So they don't. Okay, and that means there's all these, you know, herbicides in there like atrazine, there's other herbicides that are estrogenic, ethyl estradiol from birth control pills is in the water. So basically if you don't f use a carbon filter on your water, you're probably drinking the urine uh, uh, birth control pills from another woman. You know, it's not a whole lot, but it adds up. And there's a whole bunch of other estrogenics in there, so it all keeps adding up. It's a cumulative effect. Also, a lot of municipal water filtration will use aluminum as a clarifier of the water. Great. A metalloestrogen and all these other estrogens. People can have extraordinarily high levels of these estrogenic chemicals. They find them routinely in women's in, and men, in their blood, in their urine, in breast milk. The more you learn about it, the more you realize it's a disaster, all these estrogen chemicals. But again, once you know this stuff, it's real easy to avoid these. Um, I think it's a good idea to have a whole house carbon water filter, a good one with auto backwash, meaning that it cleans itself. That costs about $1,500. Um, it's good to have a reverse osmosis filter in the kitchen. That costs about $600. You know, there might be cheaper versions of these available, but these are pretty standard prices that I'm aware of. Um, be careful about bottled water. A lot of bottled water is in something like a polyethylene terephthalate, terepha, phthalate, you know, estrogenics. It can be sitting on a hot truck and the phthalate's outgassing into the water. So best thing is to have a reverse osmosis filter in your house and drink your water from that. But be aware that it could be hypoosmolar. We've talked about that in my lectures on water. Okay, a couple other miscellaneous estrogens. We talked about aluminum and, you know, like for example, if you end up you know, getting a, a submarine sandwich, put it in wax paper. Don't put it in aluminum foil. Don't ever eat off of aluminum. I won't eat off of aluminum. I don't care if it's socially uh, awkward. I won't do it. As a matter of fact, I went, I was on vacation one time with my kids and we were ordering food and I told the lady to put my stuff on wax paper. She accidentally put it on aluminum. I refused to purchase it. I said, put it, no, make a new one, put it on wax paper. My kids like started walking away from me and turning red. What a jerk I was, but I didn't care. I had told her in advance, I'm not going to eat off aluminum. Um, benzyl salicylate, all these perfumes and fragrances, they very often will have um, these phthalates in them. I wouldn't, I'd avoid them. Uh, OCPs are all contraceptive pills. Yeah, that's a lot of estrogen. Uh, you know, this stuff is estrogenic. Lavender is estrogenic. Uh, moldy oats and other grains can have zearolenone in there. So, you know, I do think it's good to eat oatmeal and uh, other organic grains, but if they're looking old at all, just toss them in the garbage. Red dye number three and number 40 are thought to have estrogenic properties in them. So you don't want to eat any processed food, and, and don't be giving processed food to your kids. It's not good for your kids. Um, flax has four times as much estrogen as soy, and soy and has like hundreds of thousands of times more estrogen than the vast majority of other foods. Uh, that's the reason why I, I'm not interested in eating those things. Um, atrazine, we talked about that being very estrogenic. Uh, and these other chemicals here, these other herbicides are also quite estrogenic. That's what the paper suggests. I wouldn't eat them. Okay, some thoughts on how to lower estrogen levels. I think the best thing, and I say this after a lot of thought, is you know be like Adam and Eve, but keep the benefits of indoor heating and indoor plumbing. All right, we don't need all these chemicals. You really don't need them. Um, I don't use any deodorant. I don't put anything on my body. I, I think I've said this before, but in my my wife and I got separate bathrooms. Okay, that's one of the secrets of getting along, but husband and a wife. I have zero cosmetic products in my bathroom. I don't even use shampoo. Okay, I got this one soap that's like the clearest, least amount of chemicals in a soap. And I only use that because I have to. Um, nothing else. In my wife's bathroom, she's got like 55 chemicals. You know, and I said, what are you doing? 55 cosmetic products. I'm like, what are you doing? You don't even know what's in there, how many estrogenics or other things. She's like, you don't understand. You know, a woman would rub... I wouldn't even use the word she said on her face if she thought it'd make her prettier. I'm like, you're putting estrogen chemicals on this. She said, I'm just jealous because she doesn't have wrinkles. So anyways, um, dishwasher detergent. If you don't cook with oil, you probably don't need dishwasher detergent because it tends to be quite estrogenic and quite concentrated. Also, if you have to have somebody in your family using dishwasher detergent, I always rinse my cup off first in just the regular water 
and then uh, even I'll, I'll reverse osmosis. I won't eat off it unless I've done that. It all adds up. You know, I come from being interested in very high performance. And, you know, when I was an athlete in college, I'd see, you know, national championship matches come down to one point. So my attitude is you always want to try to be the best you can be, the healthiest you can be, because if you do that, you'll fix a lot of little problems. You might waste some time here and there, but in the long run, you'll be the best you can be. You'll be better off. Whereas a lot of like lazy, half-assed people, they'll keep on accumulating all these little risk factors for disease and poor health, and it can really add up on them. Um, avoid, you don't need excessive cleaning chemicals. Some things you gotta clean, fine, but you don't need to be cleaning everything constantly with all these chemicals. There's a lot more triclosan and other stuff in there, estrogenics, that you don't even realize. Um, you don't need sunscreen, we talked about that. You don't need to be wearing that much cosmetics. That's an individual choice, of course, but most of those cosmetics are gonna have estrogenic preservatives. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, if you avoid all the meat, I, rec I personally eat zero meat, not one bite. Um, you really will lower your estrogen levels a tremendous amount by doing that. And then here's some references. So uh, I think Anthony J, his book, Estro Generation, is very good. That's the best way to introduce yourself to estrogen chemistry if you want to learn more than what I've talked about here. Um, he's got videos at his YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Anthony J. Uh, if you really want to learn about the more of the intense biochemistry, Philippa Darbra, she's a lady researcher from England. She's done a ton of research on it. She's a real famous researcher. Her textbook is good. Here, I'll show you the pictures of it. So here's her textbook, Endocrine Disruption in Human Health. That is a textbook of estrogen uh, chemistry. It's a good book. Here's Anthony Jay's book, Estrogen Generation. And this is a really good book. It's very funny and clever. He's a PhD biochemist, writes a lot about energy, about estrogen chemistry. This guy's book's pretty good too. This is more of a like a serious environmental estrogenic biochemistry because there's a lot of issues in water filtration and whatnot that are said. I almost went and became a biochemist, so I like biochemistry. I've got you know a little chapter on it in my book. Plus, you know who else is really good is Neil Bernard. He's got videos about more of the clinical aspect, which a lot of people be interested in, um, of estrogen, how all these female-related diseases um, are associated with estrogen. He's especially going to emphasize the meat aspect of it, but uh, that's good too. And then if you look in these books, you'll find tons of research papers about it if you're interested in that. So anyways, hope this was helpful.